Well, the coronavirus outbreak is proving to have a far-reaching economic impact. For more on that, I'm joined live from Burbank, California, by Ryan Patel, Senior Fellow with the Drucker School of Management at Claremont Graduate University. Good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. So as we're now seeing, Chinese factories are slowly resuming work as the number of new domestic cases is slowing down. Do we have any indication of how long until the country gets back up to speed? Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing behind this is um, can the larger companies in the next, you know, few weeks get backed up to speed? But it's really the mid-sized companies to me, the small-sized companies, that's the unknown when everything can actually, when the outbreak can actually fully contain. Because it's the small companies that the human capital or labor, labor shortages is where they're getting hit, hit the most. And I think that's where if, even if, you know, Chinese companies start to become full, um, you've got that demand uh, or the supply that they're building, but the question then becomes if, they're, if the outbreak continues to go in different regions in Southeast Asia around the world, does that affect the actual demand for the supply, right? We've been talking about how there isn't enough of a supply because of the shortage. We may have the opposite problem should we go down that route. And even as we look at Hong Kong, we see that they're delaying reopening schools until mid-April. Obviously, a lot of parents can't go back to work if they're also trying to take care of the children. But with this happening in a major financial hub, what does this say about the outbreak? Well, th this, we've never seen anything like this. And when I, when I say that, we, I say that because we live in a world in a global global economy, global community that's interconnected like no other that we've ever seen in the history of the, of the economy, right? And I think because of that, it, it, it causes this new change. You, you talk about South, South Korea with over a thousand cases, movie theaters are, are going empty. No one's wanting to go out. The trust of consumer trust to go outside is not there. And so that has an effect of how people either go to work, go to school. Um, it does change the uh, economy of how you purchase things too because your behavior changes. Um, and again, if you can get it quarantined or in a way that feels that confidence, things kind of start to change. But when you feel like it's getting a little bit out of control, when you see in Italy, you see in, uh, in Iran, you see in these other places, you, you kind of do have to question, is it safe to go out? And then is it safe to go to work to do what you're supposed to be doing over your family? So given what was already happening in the Chinese economy, now adding on top of that, this shutdown, obviously still you have the, the U.S.-China trade standoff, even though they're moving forward with phase one. How do we see that playing out in Q1 and potentially bleeding into Q2? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that everything stays at a standstill. I don't know if anyone, either economy, can take a hit to be in a full trade war and on top of this, right? I think that is almost ripping the Band-Aid off and just letting it bleed when it comes to the, the actual GDP growth for each other. Um, and, and again, back to China's economy, the economic thing, I mean, it's super clear that the government has came out and said that they need, it's imperative to have economic growth and to have it stimulated back again because it can't just sit there and do nothing. Um, neither country can really kind of cut interest rates. Um, and so to be able to push that stimulus packages for people to get back to normal, help businesses, consumers back to daily, daily routine is going to be super important. So it's not about China versus the U.S. It really becomes how do you create stability within not just your own economy, but how do you help create stability with your trade partners because you need them as well? And certainly that certainly applies also for the, the bigger global supply chain. Now we are seeing more and more countries instituting some sort of ban on travel or entry. What sort of economic consequences does that have for China and beyond? Yeah, I mean, tourism, right? I mean, we saw last year when we looked at um, when the trade war got into really heated debate between China and the U.S. and China could have used tourism as a tactic of hurting hurting of not sending you know, Chinese citizens over, you know, kind of pushing it to other places like New Zealand and Australia to increase other countries' economy. Now, when you take tourism out off the table, you're going to lose percentage points. You're gonna lo it's actually, you know, who gets affected is the local businesses that are selling to them, right, with new tourism coming into new markets, and even cities that were not just the major cities specifically maybe in the U.S. or that were catering toward uh, these new tourism places uh, to create a safe haven for um, the, the Chinese tourism, vice versa. So, you know, U.S. citizens or U.S. consumers not going to China and China consumers not going to the U.S. or to other places in general um, does mean that there's less of a disposable income that was being counted on by some of these economies um, and they can't go and the GDP you can't just go and make up this GDP now you've lost it right it's not like you can go get that extra revenue stream uh, behind it and that does have a detrimental effect for the projections for this year 
And so just very quickly then, what sort of policies would help offset some of the trickle-down economic effects that we might see from the disruption? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, a lot of the infrastructure, you know, a lot of the infrastructure of some of these uh, businesses, especially, in the, I think, helping the manufacturing side and, and ensuring that the enough workers and getting them to safety and safe places and getting people back into that you know, regiment, uh, that is probably the simplest thing that anybody can do is to create that normalcy, right, and, and to be able to create that trust when it comes to maybe um, a stimulus package to be able to pump things to start going forward. Um, but th that, that's going to take some uh, planning that you can't, it's not, a, it's not a flip switch, you know, and I think that's where you need governments, businesses, uh, and the communities in this case all need to come together to solve, to solve a problem like this and like you mentioned, we haven't seen anything like this, so it's not going to be one entity being able to do it by itself. Always good to have you on. Ryan Patel there, Senior Fellow with the Draco School of Management at Claremont Graduate University.